so thank you, uh, designers and geeks. Thank you, Michelle, um, Mia, Russ. Fantastic words. Um, it's an honor to be up here. Uh, so this is what I'm going to talk to you about. So our design culture is the result of how we act on our values and beliefs through time. Over the past 15 years, I've been entrenched in various parts of this culture. Design is an ever-expanding and complicated constellation of influences, jobs, definition, and definitions, and can often feel ungraspable at times, like an ethereal mirage in the distance. Yet it can also feel small, intimate, and sometimes even provincial. Through these years, I've been fortunate to teach in a variety of capacities, attend workshops, and listen to more than my fair share of lectures. I'm interested in how design educates itself through its culture. I started as a TA in graduate school, then a volunteer for Interact Project, then a senior lecturer, and now I'm an adjunct professor at CCA, in addition to my roles at Pinterest. And as a professor, I assign reading each week that we discuss in class. Uh, I believe it's important to stimulate what designers think as well as what they make and why they make it. Uh, our gathering today reminds me uh, of a recent reading titled A Message to the Future by Tim Malley. It was published by the design magazine Works That Work, which I highly recommend if you don't already subscribe. The article is about the challenges involved uh, in warning future civilizations about a nuclear waste site, since such areas uh, take hundreds of centuries to expire. So how do you tell the people of the future not to do something? Proposed solutions varied uh, from the graphic to the architectural. Uh, one of my favorites was a proposal to breed feral cats that would illuminate when they were near nuclear waste. And so this article reflects upon the unintended consequences of our actions, as well as the unforeseeable reactions needed in the future. Put more succinctly, Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Mike Tyson. So my reflections tonight focus on the moment right after impact, when your nose is about to touch your ear. And I guarantee that my words won't be as painful. Uh, since tonight's theme is letters to a young designer, I've decided to address tonight's uh, advice to my younger self. This is letters to young Tim. Dear young Tim, this is Tim. Old Tim, that is. I'm you 15 years from now. I'm writing you because you have to stop Donald Trump from becoming president. <laughs> I'm only kidding, just, just kind of. Uh, what I'm really writing to tell you about is the journey you're about to go on. In two years, you'll be graduating from college. Uh, you, have, you have certain assumptions about what design is and what it can be. I'm here to tell you about what you're about to see. Right now, you're in art school. This is a privileged position. It does not make you better than anyone else. You'll meet many outstanding designers that never went to design school or even university. You'll work side by side with these folks and sweat the same concepts and details and deadlines. These individuals have a lot to teach you and you have something to teach them. Remain open to alternate paths to design, uh, remain open to alternate paths to design and what is designing, typo. Right now, your education is teaching you one way of design, but you'll discover that there are many methodologies for practicing. You're learning design history right now. I have some shocking news. The entire world wasn't built by the Swiss or people that attended the Bauhaus. Design in this country and abroad was built by more than just a bunch of old white men. Focus on the context that these designers worked in and dig into what was happening in society at the time. You'll learn, uh, you'll learn that the revered Joseph Albers had an equally amazing wife, Annie, with her own beautiful textile work. The same can be said of Elaine Lustig Cohen, who was the wife of Alvin Lustig, a revered modernist designer. You'll meet amazing and generous people like Amos Kennedy Jr. here. It will be part of your duty to build your own design history and speak up for the people that have been left out of it. And if we want to change the future, if we want a more diverse design community, then we need to teach it. Let parents know that their daughters and sons will not be starving artists just because they like to draw or paint. 
Let children know that they can have a fulfilling career doing work that is personally enriching and financially rewarding. The arts are just as important as any other academic subject. The culture of design needs to speak to the people that aren't represented or are underrepresented in the field. Design needs to be seen as an option in those communities, just as it was in your own. Remember when you were young, you drew all the time. Ghostbusters. This activity was continually encouraged by your teachers and your parents. And not every kid has that support in their life. Not everyone knows that if you love to draw and dream, that those skills can earn you a living. The simple combination of optimism and encouragement are two of the strongest tools that you'll use as a professor in the future. And I know that you're already practicing as a student, so keep it up. You're forming your career goals right now. You're holding awards in a higher regard than you should. Most of the magazines that you're looking at right now with their regional awards or top list of 40 under 40, uh, they'll be out of business in a few years. You'll never receive those awards and you'll be better off for it. Some of your most rewarding moments will be the simple compliments from people you care about. Value, the pin value those opinions first and you'll be happier for it. RIP ID. Many of your goals will change with age. That's because you'll achieve some of them and realize others really didn't matter that much. When you achieve a goal, take time to reflect and acknowledge it. Do the same when you miss a goal or stumble. Reflection is a muscle that you'll need to exercise in order to develop as a designer. And remember, critique is not the same as reflection. You're getting a lot of feedback right now. Your teachers, parents, and classmates are weighing in on a variety of issues. You'll be inundated with more advice than ever and might even feel a little bit stuck. Don't wait for inspiration to strike. Just get to work. That close said this better than I did. You might even find yourself on a panel giving advice. So remember to speak from the heart. That's a joke for just two people. <laughs> You'll grow disinterested when colleagues focus on button colors and kerning instead of accessibility or the societal implications of a design. You'll bring up the environmental impact of building a product destined for landfills and hazardous disassembly yards in Asia, only to, be, only to have your concerns shrugged off in front of the community. Remain resilient, stay steadfast to your values without becoming deaf to the words of others. You're discovering that design can also be used for negative purposes. You'll read ad busters and become shocked by society's overconsumption. This is a phase that many young designers uh, always encounter. You'll, you'll naively resolve to never work for a cigarette company when in reality, you'll need to worry about far more complicated issues like gentrification, privacy laws, and being associated with A-B testing people's moods through technology. Your hands will be dirty, not from complicit action, but from a lack of clarity and inaction. Simple guilt by association. You'll feel powerless in the moment, but what really matters is how you respond to those situations. Design is a complicated tool that can be wielded for a variety of purposes, but it hardly ever acts alone. You're starting to figure out your heroes right now. If you try hard enough, and with a little bit of luck, you'll shake their hands and you might even work with some of them. It's always tough to meet a crush. Don't forget that they are real people, not idols for worship. They have feelings, they will speak back, and they will speak up. While they, while they may be in design history books or seminal publications, they are not design history, so don't treat them as such. Let them know what a positive impact their work had on you. That gesture is often the best one. And spoiler alert, you're also gonna make some of them angry. But don't panic. You'll apologize and seek forgiveness. And you'll be forgiven, but don't forget to forgive yourself. You're a good student right now. You've always been diligent and put your heart into your work. Your grades in school are respectable, but don't mistake good grades for perfection. Your GPA won't guarantee that you'll be a great designer out in the world. You'll go through life and make more mistakes than you thought possible. Newsflash, you've already made some, but you haven't fully realized it. Your future mistakes won't be the earth-shaking monumental ones depicted in movies at least not most of them. The mistakes that you'll need to pay attention to are the slow ones that build over time. You'll bear this weight and make better decisions in the future, but be on the lookout and try to do your best. You're surrounded by incredible people right now. 
When you leave school, it's up to you to rebuild the proper context to do the best work. This applies even more if you go to work for someone else. They might not have a culture of design where you work, and that's fine. Because if you want a specific culture to exist, then it's up to you to do something about it. You'll need to rebuild networks and seek out moments for inspiration and learning, like lectures. You have amazing teachers right now. You think some of them are pretty good, but wait, or two, wait about a year or two uh, after you get out. What you've learned from them will continue to mature with you. Your design education doesn't end when you receive your diploma in four years of schooling. You'll barely begin to make a dent in the understanding of this profession, your place in it, or its location in the world, and that's okay. You'll continue learning as long as you remain open to it. One of the keys to a great education is becoming fully awake to yourself and your community. These teachings were famously pioneered by the people of Black Mountain College, where teachers and students focused on bringing their full selves to a micro community of artists and thinkers. Black Mountain sought to produce engaged citizens that were fully awake to their context in the world. And this is an important lesson for many, no matter what your field. The first step to being a good designer, developer, baker, whatever, is being an engaged citizen. This advice is paramount now more than ever. And perhaps most importantly, never stop trying to learn. Remain curious in the face of hardship. Stay open in spite of closed minds. Your education should never end. Now there's far more for me to tell you, but there's less time to say it. So I'll leave you with the words of the wonderfully creative Samuel Mockby. By the time you learn of him, he'll be long gone but his teachings with the rural studio will continue to, rever to reverberate throughout your life. Proceed and be bold. Sincerely, Tim. <laughs>